Hi, I'm Imogen Lamport from Inside Out Style. And I'm Jill Chivers from Shop Your Wardrobe. And in this video, we're going to talk about um, ways to dress your hair. So we've been asked to do a video on hair accessories and what those options might be, starting with hats and going through to other hair accoutrements. And we thought this was quite a fascinating topic, really. And we'd like to talk a little bit about what those options might be, and then a little bit about what the messages might be that go with those kinds of different things you can do with your hair. Yeah. So it's, it's funny, you know, you think about back to the 50s and I've got a beautiful photo that my dad took of the lunchtime crowds crossing the street in Melbourne and I'll pop it into the blog post mm. in 1956 oh, wow. in, in Collins Street in Melbourne, which is one of the kind of major streets in Melbourne. And mm. the women are wearing hats and the men are wearing hats and, and the women are wearing the gloves and, you know, it's... Mm. it's because that was, we went out, we put our hat on. Yes. Uh, we covered our head. Yeah. Um, and that was polite. Yeah. When you got inside, you took your hat off. Yes. Uh, these days, when hat wearing is much less common. Mm. and But it is something that there are a lot of different sorts of hats. I mean, so we have beanies. Mm. And beanies are very much a young person's sort of hat, aren't they? Yeah. There's caps baseball caps yeah. and you know that whole forwards backwards that it communicates something um and the shape of the bill you know, all of those kinds yes. of whether it's flat or curved and all those kinds of interesting things you know, and it's a very sporty it says it's a sportier or it's a slightly rebellious right yeah there's a rebellious element um mm. to maybe to a baseball cap or it can just be a sporty element yeah. you know we've got sun hats yeah. things that protect us from the sun yeah uh then we've got say a masculine hat like a fedora that you might wear as a woman yeah you've you've got a beret mm. which is you know kind of a little more quirky more artistic we see that as more creative more french more ooh la la <coughs> excuse me and it relates to that like the cloche hat yes um, my mother wears a lot of those sort of cloche which, soft hats which is very 1920s yeah too yeah. you know um so th there's different styles of hat and in australia the akubra you know the yes. quintessential Which australian the... outdoorsman hat yeah so mm. so they all communicate yeah so it is one of those things that if you're thinking about what hat will i wear if i want to wear a hat what's the hat saying and is that yeah. appropriate what what are you doing you know we can have the russian fur hat we can, you know <laughs> like we can have the fez yeah, um, yeah yeah you know we can go on and on there's just there's a lot of different hats and there's mm. no reason not to wear hats and hats mm can be quite fun and, and particularly in Australia we will wear hats to the races that's the place in our life where a hat or a headpiece is very common and totally expected if not part of the dress code if we think about the dressing styles personality styles yes. which of those um, are more likely to be attracted to hat wearing. I'm thinking creative would creative, be an obvious one. Creative will wear more likely to wear you know something a little more quirky. Yeah. Um, but then you might have your dramatic who goes, I'm going to wear this this great big thing. Mm. Or you might have your feminine who gets a pretty slightly floppy boho sun hat. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, and you know, you're relaxed maybe with your baseball cap. And you're rebellious or with you know, might have the baseball cap backwards or wear the beanie. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. So, because mm. there is, there's a practical element to hats, and then there's mm. also a expression of personality. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, so there's all sorts of different hats. Yeah. And then there's headpieces. So mm. I always think about the Alice band, mm. you know, which is just the, you know, and when I put one on, I think I look maybe five years old. Yeah. It looks ridiculous on me. Yeah. I have one that I use when I take my makeup off, and yeah. its sole purpose <laughs> is to get that my hair off my face. I just can't wear. I. I don't. It just. It just so does not suit me. And mm. I don't know whether, because I associate those with small children, my daughter right. wears them. Right. She is young. Yeah. You know, so it, it's a it's a piece of accessory that's very much a young person's accessory, a child's accessory. I but agree. also, too, is I think there's an element, too, where it doesn't suit all face shapes. Yes. Um, so it could just be, too, that my face shape really doesn't work with that sort of headband. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and also, and I think, but I think there's a lot to do with where we see them commonly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but then, you know, we can have a more sophisticated sort of 
you know, piece of something that goes in our hair. Now, there's little clips and things. And also, you know, little decorated clips that our children wear. Mm. <laughs> well, those lovely barrettes. When I yeah. had longer hair and I was in the corporate world, I wore my hair every day exactly the same way, mm. consistency being important. And I wore uh, one of those flat barrette those clips yes. back here. And I had a lovely array of, they're all plastic, but, you know, yeah. faux tortoise shell. Yeah. And, and, you know, they were very, very subtle. They didn't stand out. Nobody ever ran up to me and commented on my yes. hair clip. Um, they were meant to pull my hair back and be in line with that overall sort of classic professional and look that I was going for. And it looks better than a piece of elastic. It sure does. And yeah. it's better for your hair. Yeah. I always think elastic must be terrible yeah. for your hair. But yeah, so if you think about it, if I've just got a piece of elastic that's very relaxed, it's very girl next door. Yeah. But if you're wanting to look more polished at work, and these days too, you can actually get elastic so it might have like, say, a metal covering over the top or that then goes around the ponytail. Yeah. That just gives it a, it, it kind of covers it and just gives it a bit more sophistication. Yeah. And then you can have beautiful like uh, combs and things that might have some decoration on them. Yeah. Um, that you might clip in if you're doing some sort of bun. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then you can go to the extent of thinking about, well, you know, maybe I have a clip with a, a, a decoration on it that I just put in the side. I actually have a butterfly clip that is a sparkly butterfly. Yeah. Nice. Um, yeah. That's, you know, it's much more decorated. Yeah. But for me, it's, it's more kind of evening in, in a way. It's yeah. not every day. Um, yeah. And then, and then, of course, you can almost go to the confection or the, um, you know, like the the what's it called, the fascinator. fascinator. Yeah. Um, where confection is not got a hat. No. It, it's... it might be just on a comb, and it might have some feathers and some detail and a flower or whatever. Yes. Or... And the uninitiated wonder how on earth it's staying it's on your head. head. But these days, it's usually attached to a comb. Right. Yeah. Or sometimes it's attached to a piece of elastic that's basically a headband, but kind of you hide. Yeah. Um, and then there's you know. And then there's things like the, you know, the full fascinator sort of hat. Like, I mean, a fascinator officially is supposed to have a veil. Uh-huh. Is that interesting? It's supposed to fascinate, I suppose. It's supposed to fascinate, be what a little bit mysterious. the placement of hair accessories? Because I, when I had longer hair, I always thought if I did a higher ponytail, it gave a more bouncy, jaunty, yes. relaxed, informal it's look. It's more at, fun, more girl yeah, next door. Yeah, that was more a weekendy kind of look. And when it was lower and the sleeker, that was kind of more of my professional yes. look. So, absolutely, yeah. So a low ponytail is a bit more sleek, sophisticated yeah. Versus the high one is more the sporty athletic. Yeah. It's the, I'm going for a run, I need to get my hair, so I don't want it on my neck. Versus a low ponytail doesn't get your hair off your neck. Yeah. So therefore, it's still hot. Oh, uh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, so we kind of had high versus low. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and then there's kind of like putting up in buns. And these days, there's a lot of different buns. Yeah. And, and there's always like a, you could put a little clip in a bun or something that mm. becomes a little feature. And I think they yeah. all come back to personality. Yes. So sparkly things for feminine. Yeah. And, you know, you might get something that's sleeker for a more elegant chic. Yeah. You know, yeah. You something might with a skull and crossbones for rebellious. Yes. Mm, you know, there's yeah. all sorts of different kind of things to look for. And yeah. of course, they come back to what you feel comfortable with in your personal style. Yeah. And what you're trying to convey as well. Yeah. Like, I think that beautiful French roll chignon yeah. thing is one of the most elegant yes. styles of hair. And sometimes it has. Um, um, a hair accessory attached yes. to it, and sometimes it just looks like some uh, some fold magic. of magic. It's, <laughs> it's up there. Just done that, but I always think oh, that is such a sophisticated way yes. to wear your hair. Yeah. And one of the things to think about that if you are wearing hats is to think about what is the hairstyle. Yeah. A lot of hats are made to basically have hair back, yeah. so tied up. Sometimes to one side. Yeah. If it's a one-sided hat, it goes to your part side. Ah, I didn't know that. That's because good to this know. is the there's less hair on this side, so that's adding the extra volume, and you've got the hair on this side. So, and hats are actually traditionally, especially the the uh, kind of fascinated type hats, are more made to go on the right side. Huh. So, if you're like me, where you've got the part on the other side, sometimes what you need to do is, if I'm going to wear that, I'll need to part my hair on the other side wow. to do that. Surely, um, I would imagine hat wearing also has to do with whether or not you're going to keep it on all day. Yeah, whether it's going to be an on-off, whether I'm just wearing it to get to work, some... and then when I'm there, I'm taking it off. off or... Or, yeah, hmm. and, and this is where, in polite society, we used to always take our hat off. Right. So, but apart from the races where you wore the, your hat all day, or to a wedding, yeah. or some mm -hmm. sort of function, though, mm -hmm. probably even if you went to a wedding. If you were at a nighttime sit down dinner, you would take your hat off. Yeah. And of course, the problem with hats and there is can be hat hair. 
Yes. And so that's, and hair, yeah. they often go together. Yeah. Yeah. But it's that hat head where you get that, oh, everything's right. been glued down yeah, right. because you've had this hat on your head. Yeah. So it is one of those things, and this is why too I think that when you tie your hair back, then you don't have the hat hair yeah. in the way that you might, if it was out and then you've just got this bit glued to your head and then you get volume. So. Yeah. Well, I know in uh, tropical Queensland, I have a range of very broad rin hats. They're called Madagascar hats. They're made of this sort of lovely woven thing and I have a range of different colours. And they are enormous it's like yes. walking under an umbrella and I dress them normally with leopard print you'll be surprised to know um kerchiefs and I've got one that's got a, a big um frangipani flower yes. stuck on and I can tilt them in different ways yes. and, and I have people walk across the street to ask me about my hat because the hat is such a big statement and I am aware if I'm going to be wearing it for a while so if I'm going to be out we're going to the markets or something like that that it affects how I dress because the hat is 10 paces ahead of yeah. me. It's walking into every space before me because it's it's this big statement. Yeah. It's like the hat that Holly Golightly wears yes. in um, Breakfast at Tiffany's. It's, yeah. they're, they're huge. So there's just a few ideas about hats, headwear, accessories you might want to think about. If you want to explore hats and ex hair accessories um, as part of your dressing style. Yeah, it'd be fun to experiment and we'd love to hear how you go and what your thoughts are.